Hello everyone, I hope all is well. We are here with another project. It is a mid-century modern dining table with two extended leaves underneath. This table is in really rough shape. The um, finish on top is almost completely gone. It's got some stains, but we are gonna make this thing look like brand new. So I hope you enjoy this and let's jump straight into this one and get our hands dirty. So to start this project off, I'm going to sand it all down to bare wood because this is going to be a restoration and no paint. It is in really great shape. I just need to get all of that finish off. And I'm using 150 grit sandpaper because I don't want to go any coarser than that because for this finish, it's coming off super, super easy. So after a little bit of digging, I did find that this dining table could potentially be a BRDR Furbo Danish um, dining table. It is typically made of teak or rosewood and this being a darker wood, I'm going to go with rosewood and not teak and these tables are super, super sought after and I'm super thankful to have gotten my hands on one of them. So I did sand up to 220 grit just so I can get all of those swirls and pigtails out. Um, it gives it a really nice finish. I could use maybe a 320 but 220 seems to be the sweet spot. So for these edges I'm just using the same 220 so that way I'm not using uh, 120 or 150 and leaving a lot of scratches behind. So now that the top for the most part is sanded down, I'm going to remove the top to reveal the two leaves. And the leaves are in much, much better shape as it doesn't seem like they have ever really been used much. I think just from transporting and moving around, they got a little scratched up. I'm using um, 150 grit sandpaper, but this finish, I'm not sure what it is. It's not uh, like a thick plastic coating. But this stuff, I mean, it was a pain to sand it all the way down to bare wood. It seemed like there wasn't even really an actual top coat. It just seemed like to get that color out just took a lot of work. And after I'm done sanding it, I'm using some mineral spirits just to clean all the dust off and reveal this very, very beautiful wood grain. So I tried to tread really lightly with my sander on these rounded edges because I don't want to square them off or take off too much material. So I'm hand sanding to take any of the flat spots out and to get these corners um, with the finish removed from them completely. I'm covering this up because I'm going to place the top on it upside down so that I can get the under lip of it. As you can see, they don't um, put a finish underneath the table but they do kind of finish it under to those lips on the edge of that right there. So same steps for the bottom, I'm just using 220 grit on my orbital sander and then I go over with 220 grit hand sand just to get all the finish off of those corners because I don't want to damage them with my sander. Once I'm pretty much done with the top, I remove the leaves just so that I can get access to the base because it's just going to make it a lot easier for me to sand all of that down to bare wood. And not to um, say this video is going to be really boring, but there is a lot and lot of sanding that's happening because it's just going to be all restoration and no paint. These leaves come off fairly easy. They have dedicated sides that they go on and you can't really mess that up when putting it back together. And then this um, railing in the middle that holds the top on is getting removed. And then I move over to the legs to remove those as well because I'm sanding all of that down as well. And it's just easier to sand uh, the stretchers with the legs out of the way.
It's amazing to see um, how structurally sound this thing is when those bolts are tightened, but once you loosen them, this thing feels really flimsy. But like I said, once you tighten those bolts back down, this thing is rock solid. Just a quick thank you to all my supporters and followers out there. I really appreciate everybody hopping into the comments and sharing your nice compliments with me. I really do truly appreciate it and I do enjoy sharing all of this footage and content with everybody and I hope people are able to take away some tips and tricks from these videos and hopefully implement them onto a project of your own. So oh, something that I found that was kind of weird is that there was almost all the veneer missing from this one stretcher but what I found is that it actually had another layer of veneer over top of it so I'm not sure if somebody tried to put um, another piece of veneer over the bottom veneer which doesn't make any sense because once I sanded that other piece of veneer off completely it was really really nice underneath so I'm not sure um, what the whole deal was with that. For the most part when dealing with mid-century furniture or any kind of vintage furniture at all usually the legs and the base and stuff like that, that they use um, to make these pieces are usually cheaper than the veneer that is over the main pieces but this piece in particular um, after sanding the finish off of all of these legs had a really really nice wood grain all the way through and I'm just curious if anybody knows if this could just be um, a really good solid hardwood because to me it uh, doesn't seem like any type of cheap like pine or poplar or anything especially when I rub this Danish oil on it and by the way that is what I'm using to finish this entire piece is Danish oil because the wood grain and the color of the wood naturally is just really really nice i didn't want to use any kind of polyurethane over top of that i really love the grain and the color of the wood on this piece which is why i went with the danish oil this is the first time me ever finishing a piece with danish oil so this is kind of a sealer and um a top coat at the same time I guess they mix it with a couple of different uh, chemicals to get it to spread and dry uh, to like a hard nice finish um, the only thing is once it starts to dry they say to give it 15 minutes to soak in and then you have to go around and wipe it off what I found is that once it starts to dry up or tack up it is super hard to kind of get it off so you have to sit there and buff it off i recommend going in small circles and small sections uh, just to get it all off but it is well worth it because it exposes the wood grain beautifully so i don't show it in the video but i do two coats of this stuff because it's recommended to do multiple coats to get a really good protection uh, finish off of it um, two was good enough for me because it was just a ton of buffing um, Now that everything has had a chance to dry this stuff they say is usable within six to eight hours um, I'm just putting everything back together and then later on I believe that I'm going to put a uh, wax coating on top of it as well Like I said, this is a super simple table. Um, the construction on it is super simple. And once you add those uh, legs back to it and the stretcher across the top of it, this thing is solid and does not wobble one bit. So I have to say I am really enjoying these restoration projects. Um, I'd like to do a lot more of them moving forward. I do enjoy painting furniture and giving them um, really extreme makeovers and dramatic um, just outcomes. But for these, there's just something so satisfying about refinishing it back to the way that it was. And it's, it's gonna be a bigger part of my channel, hopefully moving forward, if I can find the pieces to support it.
Just a little spoiler alert, at the end of the video when I go over the numbers, you guys are going to be blown away with um, how much I actually got this table for. Um, right now I'm using a stain pen to touch up these little spots that went through the veneer. Um, I just like to dab it on. Um, before I used to just wipe it off and I kind of figured um, that it wasn't working, but I guess you have to just like add a little bit of air to it or let it dry a little bit before you um, wipe it off. And if you just layer it enough and keep uh, dabbing it out, it almost always disappears. So I'm using a furniture wax by Dixie Bell. Um, this stuff is super, super good. It actually makes the wood grain really, really rich in color. It brings out all of the wood grain and gives it a nice protectant layer over the top of it, but it also makes it smell super, super good. The um, scent on this one is called Orange Grove and it just, I'm telling you, it smells great. So I'm just doing a little bit more touch up where the veneer kind of came off on these edges and I have to say discovering these little um, stain pens was the best thing that I ever found and more of that wax on the legs. I mean look at the grain on those legs they match perfect. Everything was done with Danish oil that doesn't have any stain in it and everything matches which tells me that all of it is made out of the same wood and is of great great quality. So now that this thing is pretty much wrapped up, I wanted to extend the leaves and grab the top so that I can install it right in the middle, just so you can get an idea of how massive this table is. With those leaves extended, this table is huge. It's, it's ridiculous actually how big this table actually is when you extend those leaves. This is one of the biggest things that I love about this table is that they match the wood grain all the way down the middle to the leaves and that is just like such uh, a great look for it and it tells me that it's uh, the craftsmanship on this thing is really high level and I was super super happy with the way this table turned out. I had no idea that it was actually even going to look this good when I bought it because it was so dingy and dirty. I didn't really see that wood grain through it. Now that this piece is wrapped up and ready to go, I took it to my storage where I like to stage my furniture and these are the shots that I took. So I'm super pleased with the way that this project turned out. It's actually a lot more nicer than I thought it was gonna be. Um, let's go over the numbers real fast. Um, I paid $70 for this table, believe it or not, uh, which was a steal of a deal. I paid about $15 for the Danish oil. I still have like half of it, but I'll just count it all. Um, I used probably $5 in wax and sandpaper, bringing me to a total of $90. Took me about eight hours, was just mostly a lot of sanding. And then I reached out to a customer of mine that I know really, really loves mid-century furniture. And we were able to strike a deal at $800. And I made a profit of $700 uh, or $710 to be exact, which is around $87 an hour. And I couldn't be happier. Uh, the customer was super happy. And I just like to thank everybody for making it to the end of the video. Hopefully all of this information is very helpful for you guys. Um, I like to share the numbers. Um, not to brag or anything, but I just really want to help people out to um, give an idea of the kind of stuff um, that I do and what you can possibly sell it for. So thank you all again, and I cannot wait to see you guys all on my next project.